Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. Today I wanted to show you how you can earn up to 250 million isk an hour consistently in HiSec. And I do that by running T4 and T5 uh, Abyssal Dead Space sites. So, what you're going to need to know how to uh, do these sites is Piffer. You need this to decide a fit. Um, the in-game simulator is good, but Piffer does it much better. So I strongly advise you to just download it. It's in the description. And that's where you can see all the stats you need to fly these Abyssal Dead Space sites. For running a T4 Abyssal Dead Space site, you earn on average 150 million isk per hour. That's in my experience of running lots of sites. And also in T5, you'll earn on average 250 million isk an hour. It'll sometimes be less, it'll sometimes be more, but that's on average what I get. I've run hundreds of these sites, so I know what I'm talking about. So, what are Abyssal Dead Space sites? For you guys who've been living under a rock, you are in case space. Uh, so uh, high sec, low sec, uh, even wormhole space actually. So they, I guess it's not considered case space. But what I mean is that you're not in the abyss. Uh, what you do is you activate a filament, filament. It takes you to the abyss and you go into a pocket. You fight bad guys, kill all the bad guys. You take the gate, go to the next pocket, kill all the bad guys. Take the gate, go to the next pocket, kill all the bad guys. And then you go back and the final gate takes you back to where you were before. In each pocket, there's a loot container. You destroy it and you get uh, loot. And you can sell this on the market. And this is what how you get your ISK. So, when it comes to the required tank to tank sites in Abyssal Dead Space, I would say for four, T4s, in my experience, you need at least 400 EHP per second tank to do them very comfortably. You can have less, but then you would really, it will not be as comfortable to run them. And it, you could get killed if you are unlucky. In T5s, 600 EHP per second is where I draw the line for being very comfortable. Also, it's important to note when I said you need 400 EHP per second uh, tank for T4s and 600 EHP per second for T5s, I'm talking about after the weather effect. So, as you see here, I got 400 EHP per second. But then if I'm going to add an environmental effect, abyssal weather, for example, electrical storm 3, you always have to add 3, by the way, never 2, never, always add 3 because that's the worst case that can happen. And then now I'm 300 DPS, uh, EHP per second, and that's not enough tank. So in this case, this gear fit here has only 333 EHP per second, and that means it will not have such a good time tanking. It will probably run some sites, but you'll probably have a lot of close calls. It all depends on your skills, and you can you, uh, open the character editor and add your character, and then you can uh, uh, log in here, and then it'll have all your skills, so you know exactly how much EHP per second tank you're going to have. That's why I really wanted you to use Piffa for this. Uh, it can also be for armor tanks. It doesn't have to be for shield. This is, In this case, I'm using a shield booster here. If you are using a passive shield tank, you can also add this uh, amount up. Uh, so you can also add that to how much EHP per second you're tanking. When it comes to your capacitor, you need to have a very good and very stable capacitor. Uh, in this case, I'm uh, simulating an electrical storm, and this gives me a boost to my capacitor. That's a type of abyssal dead space site you can run, electrical ones, as I had in this image here. And they give you boost to capacitor. So I've got plenty of capacitor, so I'll be very uh, resistant to newting, and the, you will experience neuters in the abyss. It's important to have good cap stability. I also always recommend you at least have one battery. Two will make you really new resistant, but one is the gold standard in my opinion because uh, cap batteries have inherent neutralizing resistances. This 27% telling you how uh, much percentage of the neutralizing is being uh, mitigated because of my battery. It may seem very enticing to go passive tank since that will not rely so much on you having a good capacitor as an active tank. But uh, based on my experience, I would say you actually are a lot safer using an active tank. Because the thing is, if you are in an active tank ship, you'll have an inherent, um, inherently strong capacitor. So it'll be harder for the enemies to neutralize you. As well as usually active tank to, uh, ships carrying batteries. This will make them have further more... Uh, neutralizing resistances which passive tank people usually do not have batteries so they'll ha be able to be neutralized even more the hardness will go away and also in general active tank ships tend to tank a lot more and you can also overheat uh, even the boosters which will give you extra tank so i'd still strongly recommend active tanks over passive tanks even though it may at first seem very risky because that's why i initially thought but it turns out that was the complete opposite um when it comes to dps I would say it de it really depends. I mean, in a T4s, 500 will definitely be all right. 
600 can get you through T uh, T5s. Anything more is better and it'll also increase your ISK power because you'll be doing uh, them quicker. It also is important, when I say 500 DPS for T4s and 600 DPS for T5s, I'm talking about actual applied DPS. I do not mean you've got going to have these uh, Scourge Rage heavy assault missiles and oh wow, look I have 700 DPS and you no know, application modules. You will. I'm talking about actual DPS you can get to hit. This Gila fit over here has 679 DPS. That's some good DPS over here. And it is very easy to apply this DPS. There's light missiles, they're going to be applying everything. Drones, also, these medium drones are also very good at applying stuff. So the DPS here is very good. But the most important thing is that you have enough tank because you don't want to die. Even if you have not so good DPS, you'll usually uh, be able to kill the site. It'll just be a lot slower and you'll uh, take a lot longer time and less is power. But just as much DPS as you can cram into that. When it comes to Dibis, there are four different types of weather effects. There's Dark, which is, uh, and then there's Electrical, Exotic, Firestorm, and Gamma. Uh, these all have different effects that uh, affect your ship and the enemy's ship. And uh, when it comes to Electricals, Exotics, Firestorms, and Gammas, they all have a certain, they reduce the resistance of a certain type. So in Electricals, they reduce EM resist, Exotics reduce Kinetic resist, Firestorm reduces Thermal, Gamma, Explosive, etc. The important thing to know is when running these four, always fit your ship to do this damage type. So if I'm running an electrical, I'll run infiltrated drones because they do EM damage. Because the enemy ships will also have reduced EM damage. So you want to maximize uh, or capitalize on that. In thermals, in fi oh, in firestorms, you would want to use um, uh, hammerheads, for example. They do thermal damage. When it comes to implants... Implants are very handy if you want to increase the effect of your tank. For example, here I've got some high-grade crystal implants uh, added to my ship. If I were to remove them, my EHP per second is greatly reduced. And the same goes for armor tank ships as well. You want to use Asclepians if you want to increase your EHP per second. Or you could use other implants that perhaps um, increase your damage or some other kind of stat, stat that will give you the required uh, stats you want. I usually like to use MWDs in the Abyss when using Aguila. This is because uh, the drones and the missiles have a pretty long range. So I can just fly to the extraction caches uh, and grab the loot and then have my drones and missiles do all the damage. Some ships, for example a Sacrilege, have very close range missiles. An MWD wouldn't be as uh, good in terms of getting the caches because you've got such a short range. So if you go to the caches, you'll not be in range of the enemies. So what I'd do then is carry an MTU if you are in a short range ship because then you can just go to uh, use the MTU to pull in all the loot. When it comes to your pricing, it's very important to, depending on where you run your ship and also how good your ship is to take into consideration the pricing. For example, this ship here uh, runs, uh, has a fitting cost of 190 million so the total is then 376 million including the hull that is good that is good that's a really good uh, tier price if we were to run t4s in it in this case it doesn't have enough tank but uh, because the thing is many people gank abyssal dead space runners they scan their signatures down and they gank them and it's almost impossible to survive these ganks unless you've got an assault damage control or very high buff tank ship so what I'm trying to say is just consider yourself eventually dying somehow. And if you have a ship that's not worth a lot, it'll both be easily to replace and also less likely the gankers will be on your chase. Because often what people do is they have scanner alts scanning your ships in stations and they'll see, oh, this guy has a lot of blinged out stuff. For example, if we were to have like this module here, Pythium A-type multi-spectrum shield hardener, will cost a billion just for this. And people will say, oh, that guy, put him in his watch list and they're going to locate you and then eventually gank you. Uh, and steal potentially steal this if uh, if you have cheaper stuff less likely that you're under gankers radars and even if you do get ganked you replace your ships very quickly it's also important that you don't go super expensive because abyssal dead space uh, running is quite risky when it comes to disconnects uh, if you have a disconnect it's likely that you'll survive if you're in a good ship but if you're in a very weak ship and you have a disconnect it could be uh, you could die and uh, this is something ccp usually does not uh, reimburse you in unless there's like a server problem or something so even you still do not want to go super crazy on the price of your ship uh, one thing i usually do is i go quite expensive on the implants so i would have then these high grade uh, crystals 
an example. You could have high grade crystals. And these are very expensive implants. But the thing is, if you get ganked in these, they're not going to get your implants. The only thing they'll get is your ship. And if you have a cheap ship, then it won't be so much to replace that. I wanted to show you now some example fits that um, can work. This is my bread and butter gila for T5 electricals. And it's how I earned that magical 250 million isk per hour in high sec. A lot of bling, 1.69 million fittings and 1 billion implants for the high grade crystals, increasing the shield boost amount. So you've got 1.69 billion isk on the line for gankers to gank you. However, you do earn 250 million isk per hour. And if you don't get ganked, this is certainly worth to invest in. Here's my go-to ship for running T4s. It's a really trusty gila. Um, it doesn't cost that much in terms of fittings, 274 million. The expensive thing are the implants. But the thing is, if I get ganked, it's only 270 million uh, uh, loss. It's not that much. It's the main thing is the implants. And that's a good way to mitigate yanking. And as you can see here, I've got over four, plenty over 400 HP per second tank. So I'm going to be very comfortable running this. This ship here is a sacrilege. And this can be used to run uh, T4 electricals. Um, if you are of the Amar uh, kind. It is not that expensive. I mean, for 512 million. And it has an assault damage control. So if you get ganked, you can use that to perhaps survive. Uh, it doesn't have the 400 EHP per second tank I was talking about. But the assault damage control really can save you if you get into ch uh, cheeky situations. So this, uh, this works. It's a bit slow though, because the DPS is not that good. We only have one damage module and the missile, heavy assault missiles don't apply that well. We've got a target painter and a stasis web fire, which helps though. So, I mean, these can run T4 electrics, just uh, I would say it's not that reliable. And I don't use any implants with the sacrilege. This is an Ishtafi I use for T4s. It has plenty tank. The only thing though is that is bad about this fit is that since it's got lots of EHP per second, but its shield buffer is so small. So if you are against, and there are enemies in the abyss that do a lot of burst damage. So it could be that they could almost one shot your shields. Now that's why we have a damage control because it helps you survive these kind of things. So you're pr you're pretty all right, but the thing is you must pay attention. Do not go AFK if you're going to run this ship. Only 430 to 1 million, so it's not that much. But do not go AFK because um, if you do get suddenly bursted down, you want to uh, quickly use your assault damage control so you can wrap up. I use no implants with the ship. Anyway, that's that's it for the guide on T4 and T5 Abyss and how you can earn up to 250 million isk an hour in high sec. Uh, thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you later.